Next month, we're talking recession, foreclosures, and the job market. Oh my. And how all those things impact housing and more importantly, how they can impact you. So stay tuned. Welcome to another local market update with Rick Batista. Welcome to our monthly market update where we'll be covering the month of April and a bunch of other info impacting the housing market, the economy, you and your household. There are so many things that are going on with the economy right now, as well as in and around housing, which is why I'm committed to bringing you weekly market updates uh, besides these monthly updates. So be sure to check out those videos every week. Uh, before we get started, I just want to let you know that the, this video discusses both national and local data. Uh, the local data we'll share in just a bit is for all of Chicago proper, the 77 areas. And although we do service all of Chicagoland, including Deburbs, later in the video, we'll only be diving into the city's data. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube and tuned in because you want to find out uh, about a specific area in the subject line of this video, you should be able to see the chapters in the caption uh, down below to easily jump ahead to the specific segment with the hyper local data. So let's get started with some fun facts and we'll share some other info and slides and insights uh, with you before covering the numbers. Fun facts, fun facts, market time. U.S. existing home sales declined 2.4% month over month as of last measure, according to the National Association of Realtors, reversing February sales gain of 14.5%. Fluctuations in mortgage interest rates have caused buyers to pull back, with pending sales dropping 5.2% month over month. Meanwhile, the median existing home sales price declined for the second month in a row, falling 0.9% nationally from the same time last year, the largest year-over-year -year decline since January 2012, according to the NAR, National Association of Realtors. New listings in the city Chicago were down 21.9% for detached homes and 36.7% for attached properties. Listings under contract decreased 17.5% for detached homes and 32.4% for attached properties. The median sales price was down 15.7% to 295k for detached homes, but was up 0.3% to 380k for attached properties. Month supply of inventory increased 25.1% for detached units, but increased 4.8% for attached units. And we'll be covering and diving deeper into those local uh, numbers and uh, later on in the video. Housing inventory remains tight nationwide with only 980,000 units available for sale heading into April, a 5.4% increase from one year earlier. Although the number of homes for sale is down compared to the same period in 2019 prior to the pandemic, the lack of existing inventory continues to impact home sales and with only 2.7 months supply of homes at last measure, competition for available properties remains strong, especially in certain price categories with multiple offers occurring and about a third of properties, including according to NAR. So like I said, we'll be taking a look, a closer, much closer look, I should say, uh, at the city of Chicago's data and information and see how uh, it's comparing to um, nationwide figures. Uh, but first, let's start off here talking about recession. This was a, a topic that we covered in great length uh, in a recent video of ours. But, uh, you know, the big question is, what is recession? Uh, and this is a definition by the National Bureau of Economic Research. Uh, they define recession as a significant decline in economic activity spread across the economy lasting more than a few months, normally visible in real GDP, real income, employment, industrial production, and wholesale retail sales. And uh, again, as we mentioned in a recent video. Just to clarify that uh, I'm going to include myself in this bunch, uh, we're, there's a lot of projections that uh, the recession may last the next couple of years, uh, but hopefully it's going to be a mild one. Uh, that's the information and data that we're taking a look at, and uh, that's what that's what we see. So I will obviously tell. But I just want to keep everybody in mind that a recession does not necessarily mean falling home prices. Uh, and that's one thing that uh, there was uh, anticipation about coming into 2023. Uh, that just hasn't been the case, although there's been plenty of flat growth in some of the areas that shot up uh, very quickly and, and quite high uh, during the pandemic. Those are the ones that are seeing most of the impact, especially um, you know, kind of out west and south uh, and definitely some more of the techie areas. Uh, but history does show uh, that it does typically, recession typically means that uh, we're going to see lower mortgage rates. And we've been seeing that, you know, the rates going up and down a little bit. Uh, they have been trending uh, downward for the most part overall. Uh, and that is the anticipation that they will continue to go down. We're definitely not going to see the two to three percent uh, range that we were seeing uh, during the the height of the pandemic and all that craze, but uh, but you know we're we're in a pretty normal market and uh, and I think it's the, safe to say at least at this point uh, that we'll see rates become a little bit lower uh, and hopefully a little bit more reasonable for buyers out there. But please go back and check out uh, one of our most recent videos where we discuss the pros and cons of buying during a recession. Uh, one of the pros was that the, the Fed usually lowers interest rates to incentivize people to spend money and help stimulate the economy. Uh, in turn, that move can help uh, get more 
mortgage rates down, leading to more opportunities for home, home buyers and homeowners uh, who are thinking of selling. So bad news can certainly be good news for you, right? Looking at the housing market from one aspect, uh, Andy Walden, the VP of Enterprise Research at Black Knight, recently said this, uh, just five months ago, prices were declining on a seasonally adjusted month over month basis in 92% of all major US markets. Fast forward to March and the situation has done a literal 180. Price is now rising in 92% of the markets from February. And this uh, next chart here shows months inventory of homes for sale. And this is uh, provided by the National Association of Realtors. Uh, you can see where the times where we have had uh, greater than seven months uh, of inventory of homes for sale and the times that we've had less than six months. Uh, inventory, uh, neutral market is six to seven months. Uh, today, we are sitting in the seller's market uh, and I know some can certainly debate that, uh, but overall, I would say that the sellers have an upper hand, although it's my personal opinion that the market is, uh, for the most part, pretty fair and reasonable, uh, but I would say that the sellers uh, certainly do have the upper hand in many situations, if not most. So we find ourselves in more of a seller's market. Uh, let's see how much interest uh, we have out there from buyers. And this is data provided by Showing Time. Showing Time is a resource for brokers where uh, showings can be scheduled electronically, um, whether it's by other brokers or the broker themselves, if somebody reaches out to them directly, uh, unrepresented. But here we are looking at the last 12 months, uh, showing traffic steadily climbing in 2023. Uh, you can see where, where rates went up, uh, I think it was around mid or late May last year. Uh, certainly a huge decline from May to December and steadily declining down. Uh, June through December. Uh, but right after the new year, uh, it was very interesting. Uh, even though uh, rates didn't take a drastic turn downward, uh, they did they did tick down a little bit uh, at the new year. And, and uh, I, I think this was probably the very first weekend uh, where open houses were being held and there was a plenty more activity out there. And that's been steadily climbing since then uh, with uh, with us peaking in March. So it'd be, it'd be very interesting to see how we end up in April and how the rest of the spring market pans out. This is also information from showing time, uh, showing traffic about pre-pandemic levels. And we take Take a look at the uh, showing index for March over the last seven years, going back to 2017, uh, the pandemic years of 2021 and 2022. Very hard to compare those years to other ones because they were, mm, I would say, not normal. Uh, and I think everybody can agree on that. But 2023, uh, certainly, certainly much higher than the 2017-2020 period. When the markets during those years, uh, especially from 2017 and 2019, are uh, considered more normal. So that's uh, certainly a silver lining there. More showings doesn't may not necessarily mean more sales, uh, but it does mean that there are more uh, more buyers out there and more buyers interested in buying. And I think if we looked at uh, recent data too, um, you can certainly look it up, but it's a public information and you can look at different resources, but uh, I'm pretty positive that the amount of uh, mortgage applications uh, has certainly been increasing as well, especially once, uh, once the rates started going uh, uh, down below seven. And again, information provided by uh, Showing Time. Affordable markets remain attractive to home buyers in the Northeast and the Midwest, uh, leading the traffic in, in showings here. And uh, and as I stated a few minutes ago, uh, the West and the South uh, certainly saw a bigger hit than the Midwest and the Northeast when it came to uh, mortgage rates going up and, and, and changes in home prices and stuff uh, as we entered into the fall of last year uh, through the winter and so far this year. So the so South and the West can boast nicer weather. Uh, especially in the winter times, but uh, but sometimes slow and steady wins the race. So 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 far so good for the Midwest and the Northeast. And looking at all, all those slides there, uh, I think it's safe to say that buyers are coming to terms with the mortgage rates that we have today. And when people ask me where should I be buying right now, uh, essentially it's wherever there's a house. Uh, and and that certainly is an answer that's meant for, more for someone who is looking to buy and hold, um, whether it's an investment property. Well, I guess all properties are investment property, right? And that I guess I know, but uh, more so for buyers who are going to be purchasing an investment rental property and holding it for some time um, or for somebody who's going to be moving into uh, a home and staying there at least five, seven, ten years. You know, we have enough data uh, and information to show that home ownership is far more beneficial, financially speaking, than renting. Uh, and we've covered this topic uh, in greater detail in uh, yet again, another recent update video of ours and uh, quite a few of our social media posts. I encourage you to check our information out. And uh, if you'd like to have a conversation and find out what all that means uh, for you, I'd be more than happy to get together, have a conversation over the phone or in person and share some real data with you to uh, make the best and most informed decisions. So we've talked a lot about buyers. Uh, how about homeowners? Um, you know, homeowners, I'd like to turn my attention to you right now. Yes, talking to you. Although it can certainly be considered a seller's market right now, I would ask that you keep in mind a few things. Uh, number one, buyers are craving quality homes and listings. Uh, unfortunately, the market is flooded with properties and need too much uh, for their price tag, uh, properties that have been neglected for some time. Uh, yeah, we really don't need any more of those properties. We've seen them and they're sitting on the market. Um, you know, they're not sitting on the market. 
it, chances are uh, a seller finally accepted a much lower price than uh, than what they thought they were going to take um, and or uh, um, uh, the price that their broker told them that they would probably sell it for. Uh, number two, be practical and realistic with your property's condition and current state. If I may suggest, look around your property through a buyer's eyes, then ask yourself how much you'd expect to pay for what you see. And keep in mind that you have the benefit of knowing your house like no buyer can, uh, e- even if they do bring an inspector through. Yes, buyers are out there looking and desperately wanting quality homes. At the very least, buyers are looking to purchase for a fair and reasonable price. You, know, you get what you pay for. And yes, of course, you, the seller, are looking to get as much as possible, but times are still tough. Although rates are fairly normal, uh, they're considerably higher than what we've been accustomed to the, over the last few years. So many things have impacted the economy and every household's budget. But how does this impact you the most? Why should you care? Because although data shows that things are improving, buyer's affordability are still greatly impacted. And I don't know about you, but I think sometimes as a society and as a species, we should be looking at the big picture. Selling to someone who falls in love with your property and can afford it at a fair and reasonable price is someone who is likely to care for that same property in the future. The more properties are cared for, the better quality of life within households and communities. And that really ends up being a win-win for society, right? Number four. And with that said, please know that I'm all for getting our sellers as much money as possible. Don't get me wrong. When we're running con, and doing all the data and busting out the abacus and whatever tool we need to, uh, you know, before it hits the market. If our client's price conflicts with our recommendation, uh, we're certainly ready to have that difficult conversation, confident that, that our numbers are supported by data and industry knowledge, and certainly our years of experience. The most crucial move we can make is hitting the market at the right price. Above all else, I, I guarantee you that that is uh, probably the biggest mistake uh, that sellers and or brokers make um, when a property ends up sitting uh, for a little too much longer than anyone anticipated. It's usually the price. Uh, marketing helps. Having a great broker helps. Uh, but price, that's that's number one. If you don't price it right, uh, without a doubt, that will lead to a longer market time. And with each day that a property sits on the market, the level of vulnerability uh, is bound to rise as well. Which, as a broker representing you, that really puts us up against the wall when we're trying to negotiate on your behalf. And I don't know about you, but when I'm negotiating, I prefer to have the upper hand. Now, let's talk about foreclosures for just a bit. Uh, here's some info and slides about bank-owned properties at the National level. Yeah, going back to 2017. And why do we keep on going back to 2017? Well, that's a pretty good indicator. Uh, those those three years there, 2017 and 2019, right before the pandemic hit the states in, in March of 2020. Uh, those were, again, normal years. But the average uh, in those three years was 598,118 properties uh, with foreclosure filings. And uh, last year, we were at 324,273, which is uh, short uh, by nearly 274,000. So although you can hear all the headlines and read all the headlines you want about foreclosures going up, uh, yes, we had a moratorium during the pandemic. We're going to virtually zero to anything. Uh, it's going to sound like a huge jump, but to put things in perspective, much less than the average uh, and certainly less than much less than the average good enough. This other chart here looking back to uh, Q1 of 2005 through Q1 of this year, uh, you can see where foreclosures uh, picked up uh, right after the bubble burst there in, in 2008 and certainly going up because we've talked about that. Uh, things really started happening in 2006 with all the funny, funny uh, finances and lending uh, opportunities out there. But that just g- gives you a chart overall of U.S. properties with foreclosure filings. Uh, it certainly has gone up uh, since the pandemic years, uh, but still pretty darn low uh, compared to previous years. And just to recap on a national level, I'm uh, going to cover the local data in just a second. U.S. foreclosure activity continued to climb in the first quarter of this year. Nearly 96,000 U.S. properties with foreclosure filings uh, during the first quarter of 2023, and a total of over 65,000 U.S. properties that where they had the foreclosure process uh, started against them. What does that come down to, statistically speaking? Uh, one in every 1,459 housing units had a foreclosure filing in the first quarter of 2023. And lenders ended up repossessing 12,518 U.S. properties through the foreclosure uh, REO in the first quarter of this year. And it's always, always, always unfortunate when somebody is going through a foreclosure process uh, or even a short sale, um, but that's just a fact of life when it comes to uh, housing. Uh, some people just fall into tough times that they can't get out of. And there are things that can be uh, done prior to prior to that happening, uh, but just like with so many other things in life, you need to go and seek help. Uh, and 
and certainly is either speaking with uh, an experienced realtor, a broker, or an attorney, or perhaps even an accountant. I might be able to help you with uh, looking at things from a financial perspective, but please speak with a professional uh, and you can always reach out to us. That is, um, again, one of the more unfortunate uh, situations that we have to handle, but we are pretty darn good um, with, with handling and, and making a very stressful uh, situation a lot less stressful. And looking at the lender mediator report uh, for April 2023, uh, rather than covering that later, I wanted to cover that now. And just to clarify, lender mediated properties uh, are those that are marked as uh, foreclosed, REO, pre-foreclosure or short sale in the MLS. And this information is covering uh, Chicago proper the, for, through the Chicago Association of Realtors, I should say. The share of closed sales that were lender mediated in April was 3.3%. And if we look back uh, all the way back to September of last year, September, October, November, uh, and December were less than 3%. And then this year we started to uh, jump over the, the three and even in January hitting the 4% mark. Um, but April being pretty consistent with March uh, and being in le- both months being less than February's 3.9%. So last thing I'll say about that is very difficult situation for anybody going through it. Uh, typically, a lot of people wait too long uh, to try and resolve the problem. Uh, please, I'm asking you if you are in that situation or if you know somebody who is or suspect somebody who is, please, please, please be encouraged to speak with somebody. Um, we are always here to help you. And it's either a situation we can help you get out of uh, in some way, shape or form. The last topic I like to talk about is the job market is what's been driving the solid home buying interest this spring. Well, one of those things is certainly the job market. And when people are working, circumstances improve for individuals, households, communities, and housing. If only these internet hackers can go and get a job and leave our social media accounts alone, maybe we can bring that unemployment rate even lower. But looking at recent data, the job market continues to grow with 253,000 new jobs uh, that were that were produced in April and certainly stronger than expected, uh, much higher than 165,000 that, that we saw in March of last year. And we look across the board, the majority of industries uh, expanded, but the top sectors being the private education and health services, professional and business services, uh, government and financial activities. And uh, pretty much every, again, pretty much every sector uh, increased except wholesale trade. They dipped down a little bit but by 2.2%. Good news. And this next chart shows the unemployment rate going back to tw- uh, 2020, the start of 2020. And there's actually a dotted line across the chart, in the middle of the chart, showing the average unemployment rate from 1948 to 2023 of 5.7%. But this is excellent news. Uh, as of April 1st, 2023, unemployment is actually down to 3.4%, which that is the lowest level since May of 1969. Again, seasonally adjusted, as they often do with these charts. But uh, but overall, that should be pretty good news. And this next chart shows that hourly wages grew to $33 per hour. This is showing April 2023 hourly earnings outpacing historical averages. So the bottom line is that uh, the spring market is outpacing expectations. Increased wages seem to be helping make up for some of the pressure households have been feeling from inflation and the higher living costs uh, we've been experiencing the last few years. With the job market still growing, demand for homes is stronger than expected the spring market. And even with fewer listings hitting the market and inventory being unable to keep up with demand, the spring market is very active. Now that we've covered all of that information, it's time to wake up. This information and data is provided by the Chicago Association of Realtors. It is for residential activity only and current as of May 14th, 2023 for the month of April, 2023. And for the purpose of this video, we will be only discussing uh, detached single family homes, uh, not attached. Uh, Even though this report does have that information, we'd be more than happy to share that with you. But first, looking at uh, overall numbers for all properties, new listings down by 31.7%, closed sales down by 37.1%, and inventory of homes down by 23.9%. Going back to the detached market, uh, new listings, we wrapped up the month of April 2023 with 1,352 new single-family detached homes hitting the market, down by nearly 22% year over year, and that's covering April to April. Next category, covering the year to date through April, we wrapped up with 5,249 new listings down by just over 14% year over year. Closed sales, 724 last month, uh, down by nearly 31% comparing both Aprils with year to date numbers being 2,461 down by nearly 30% year over year. Under contract, we wrapped up the month of April with 884 detached single family homes down by 17.5% compared to the April prior and year to date 3,132 down by 21.4% year over year. Median sales price, 295K, down by 15.7%, comparing both Aprils, and year-to-date 289K, down by nearly 7%, 
year over year. And please keep in mind that median sales price is not the average sales price. Uh, that is the price that's smack dab in the middle. Highest equal number of homes sold for more than and less than that amount. And 295,000 is definitely not uh, not representative of all the neighborhoods in Chicago or all, all the areas I should say, but uh, but that is throughout Chicago proper, all the 77 areas. Average sale price uh, was 411,893 compared to March of 2022, where it was 518,962. Big difference there, down by 20.6%. And year to date, a little closer, uh, 415,265 was the average sales price uh, through April, uh, down by just under 11% year over year. And very interesting figure that I've uh, been covering the last, uh, I would say, maybe the last five or six monthly market updates. Uh, average list price, 123877 last month, pretty much in line with April 2022, uh, up by 1.5%. So a lot of positive uh, sellers and brokers out there. But through April 2023, 498,210, which which was down 3.4% year over year. Percent of original list price received, 96.6%, down by 2.7% compared to April 2022, and 95.8% year to date, down by 2.3% year over year. Average market time was 80 days for a detached single family home in Chicago, up by 43.8% compared to the, ap the April prior. Ouch, uh, and not that much better 82 versus 59 with an increase of 38.4 percent year over year in inventory of homes for sale we wrapped up the month with 2083 detached single family homes on the market down by 3.4 percent compared to april of 2022 <laughs> So what does all this information mean for you? Heck if I know. All depends on what's going on in your life and your household. Let's start a conversation and see how we can help you make the most informed decisions. If you'd like copies of any reports or slides we shared with you today, feel free to reach out. You can call, text, or email. My contact information is below. And remember, love and money may come and go, but time is something we never get back. So I thank and appreciate you for spending some of your time with me today. If you want to stay on top of the market with us, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button. Take care of yourselves and each other. I'll catch you next time.